Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome. I hope you're all doing super well. Before we get into the show, I just wanted to thank you all for tuning in. Doing this podcast means so much to me. I've been wanting to do this for such a long time and now to have that project finally running. It fills me with joy, so thank you so much for tuning in. I love you all and now enjoy the show. Yo, what's up friends? Welcome to another episode of the Empowering You podcast. I hope you're all doing super well. So um, after our little excursion into personal development and the depressions and the stuff in the last two weeks, um, this week I want to go back into talking about training. Uh, More exactly, I want to talk about leg training because this is something that over the course of the last year I made a lot of new experiences and learned a lot of new stuff. So I want to get into that and tell you what I learned and um, how you can improve your leg days. So um, to give you a little bit of context, uh, now already more than a year ago I suffered a back injury and it was the consequence of one of my legs being longer than the other, me didn't knowing it and over the years uh, kind of my hips moved into a bad position and then uh, when I was squatting um, all the weight would shift kind of or would pressure more on one side of the spine than the other and this caused over time so over like I lifted every day either squats or like cleans or snatches so some heavy weight like daily um, for a long long time and that kind of caused the disc to kind of slip out a little bit and then yeah I had to go through treatment and all that stuff so anyway um, because of that even though I was fit relatively quickly it was took like three months and I was back in the gym um, working out heavy but up to today I couldn't squat so I just had to fix the position of the hips first so I spent like more than a year now training legs without squatting and as you know squatting or the squat is called the king of strength it's like the biggest exercise that we have to build leg strength and for good reason and obviously because of that um, a lot of the strength programs they are based around squats now um i know a ton of people and it, it's very very common that people can't squat because um they suffer from knee pains or stuff like i had you know um squatting is a technical move it's difficult especially if you're a newer lifter and if you're doing it wrong you're gonna injure something and that's what happens to a lot of people and then they kind of develop those knee pains and they keep squatting and then they get chronic and yeah so for a lot of people um, it's hard to squat, especially to squat a lot and to, to do it pain-free. And um, as I said, I had a lot of experience in how you can still train your legs because it's very well possible and you can make huge progress. To be frank, I think uh, my, long, my, my legs are as strong as they were before, the, before my injury again or even stronger now. And that also show, shows in other lift, in the snatch and in the clean. Um, so it's very well possible to build strong legs, to build bigger legs without using squats. And that's what we're going to talk today. And over that time that I was not um, able to squat, I also figured that using other exercises, especially the unilateral ones that are still functional, like for example the lunge or the back squat, also comes with a big ad- or with, with some big advantages. That the squat doesn't have so one that we already touched on was like the knees um, I think lunges and step ups they bring your knees into a much better position and therefore you have less risk of injury um, then the load overall is lower so there is less stress on the joints um, so that again makes the movement kind of safer and what I'm saying here like both of those adventures is they, they don't really count for the experienced lifters, for, for the ones that move well um, and then have been doing it for years without problems. Uh, because if you squat, squat well, it's absolutely a safe movement and I think everyone should uh, try to get to a point where he's able to squat because it's like a basic movement that you do in everyday life. But not everyone at this point in time might be there 
uh, not everyone might be technically sound so it's good to have other options uh, that might be for your current situations a bit more safe to use but the main advantage that i see lies in the balance and the stability that as you move through those movements and keeping the weight only on one leg you kind of have to shift the weight around your core has to stabilize in more different planes and therefore um, you're building a very strong core stability and balance um, throughout the process and then another big advantage is um, the you can strengthen your legs individually so you can avoid that one leg is growing stronger than the other which happens a lot when you do the bilateral movements as just one leg that's naturally a bit stronger is working harder and therefore the difference gets bigger and if you do a lot of unilateral work you can uh, prevent that from happening and then um, getting back into it into the more beginner aspect of training just those exercises are usually technically a bit less advanced um, less demanding and therefore if you're a newer lifter again they might be a bit safer as i was saying before i've been using only these kind of exercises for well over a year now and i've seen huge progress coming with them um, i see huge benefits and um, i feel much more um, stable more explosive and also stronger now that I felt before so um, I think they're very legit in building leg strength um, but I don't want to say here that uh, those, those unilateral exercises are superior to the squat again um, I think a good program should have squats in there but um, in my future and when I will be back into squatting I'll just squat less and still do a lot of those unilateral exercises that we're going to talk about later in, the, in this episode and just keep kind of a healthy mixture between the two because uh, as I said I see huge benefits from those exercises that you don't get from the squats and a lot of the leg programs out there are just completely based around squats so I think you can do better if you get a healthier mixture in there and if you for some reason can squat temporarily or maybe even for the rest of your life because of some kind of injury that you had on your knees or on your hips then those exercises give you a very good alternative that you can keep training without ever doing squats again and you're not gonna get you um, super small and weak legs because of that so let's have a look into how my program kind of looked like over the last couple of months or respectively years so let's have a look at the exercises that I'm selecting from and let me explain also why I like those specific exercises. Um, so let's start right away with the barbell back rack reverse lunge. As I've already told you, this is kind of the main exercise of my leg program. It's the one that I continuously progress and do every week and just try to get heavier and heavier by the week. Um, and I've chosen that ex a specific exercise because it's the one that I can go the heaviest without actually squatting. So it's the best way to overload the whole system with just on a unilateral basis, right? And so I get all the um, advantages that I would get out of the unilateral training that we talked about before, the balance, the stability and all that kind of stuff, while at the same time still being able to load a lot of weight onto the legs. So for me, this is the ideal exercise and I have huge success since I implemented the lunge into my training. So I um, very much recommend that, that you base your leg training around that specific exercise. Um, and then um, I have a lot of other exercises that I add in there. So I'm doing a lot of box step ups. I've really fallen in love with that exercise during the lockdown i've been talking about it on my instagram channel if you want to check it out um, it's just a great exercise to overload the legs and like specifically work only on the one specific leg if you do it properly you don't work at all with the lower leg like all the energy comes from the leading leg so you can overload the legs with not too much weight so you don't need too much material um, which was the reason why I liked it so much during the lockdown um, but it also has a low impact on your joints because of the low overall weight that you're using then I also love the Bulgarian split squats 
um, very similar reasoning to the step ups. They kind of fall into the same category. Um, I really like sled pushes too. So this is another way how you can load a lot, a lot, a lot of weight onto your legs. And at the same time, while you're pushing the sled, your core need to be super tight. So it's also great core training. Um, and then um, I like to do RDLs and hip thrusts for um, the for the posterior chain to have like the hamstrings and the glutes working a bit harder. So with all those exercises, how do act the two leg training days then actually look like? Um, on the first day, I let's call it a strength or the heavy day, however you want. I have the main program of lunges. It's consisting of a five by 10. Um, the, I chose a five by 10 because it's kind of my equivalent to a five by five back squat. I have the weight on my back. I do five reps on each leg. So yeah, it's kind of a five by five programming just with lunges. Um, and that's the, the main part of the session where I load very heavy and then I do some accessory work. Um, I do step ups and RDLs or one leg dumbbell deadlifts, whatever it is, just some, or the, or the, um, leg extensions, whatever it is, just some, some accessory work based around legs. Uh, usually I do a super set of two exercises and when I've done, when I've done those, I just add in some core work can be some more focused on the back on that day, but sometimes also just doing a six pack workout, whatever it is, just something for the core. And then on the, um, posterior chain day or the, um, and the hypertrophy day, I'll do, um, a heavy exercise for the posterior chain. So we've talked about that. It can be a deadlift. It can be a clean. It can be a snatch, whatever, one of those three. And then after that, I'll do supersets that are mainly for leg hypertrophy. So there I usually do the Bulgarian split squats. Um, I might there do the leg extensions. Um, I can, can be pistol squats. It can even be that I add in some sled pushes in there. It's, it's very varied in the spirit of CrossFit. It's just hypertrophy for the legs after I'm um, having that strength session for the posterior chain. And then um, I would maybe do, or most of the time, I also do another six pack session. On that day, I focus specifically on the abs because at the very beginning of the training, we also heavily overload the back. So I feel like I don't need to train the backside of my core as much anymore. Just focus more on the core. And then obviously um, I have in the other sessions, always stuff that also uses the legs. It can be rowing, it can be, um, uh, again, snatches and cleans or whatever, some weightlifting movements. Like if we train CrossFit, we hardly ever uh, only train one part of the body. So the legs get used in other sessions as well. But there are those two sessions that really focus on building the leg strength. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, how my leg training has been looking like throughout the last couple of months. And as I said, um, it has been very successful. I, I feel huge um, increase in my other lifts, especially in the snatch and the clean and the ones that we kind of put our focus on. And I think a lot of it goes back to using a lot of those unilateral, but still heavy movements and just building a more stable core, building a more stable frame on the body. And for that, I think, as I said, the unilateral movements are even better suited for that than the squats. So yeah, for myself, I see huge benefits in them. I see huge progress in other areas and um, I'm looking forward to mixing it up with squats, but I'm absolutely in no hurry to get heavy squats in there again, because as I said, the training that I've been doing now without using any squats, it's going very well. Um, and I think it's very legit. So it's not necessary. It's not super necessary for me. Uh, to, to squat heavy again quickly. So I hope this helped. I hope this gives you a kind of a other perspective on how you can train your legs and take the stuff out that, that benefits you. And I really encourage you to play around with those unilateral movements and do lunges especially, but also the step ups. Those two are definitely my favorite ones. So I heavily, heavily recommend them. And um, thank you for tuning in. Talk to you soon. Peace out. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to follow the channel to stay tuned with all the future episodes. 
and you know the people that really leave a written review or send me a text message you really mean the world to me it gets me so pumped up to hear how these shows helped you how they inspired you how they helped you to get better it means so so much to me so thank you for that and also make sure to follow my social channels at pt.lucas on instagram and at pt.lucas on tiktok talk to you soon in the next show peace out <laughs>